Hello, beautiful people of the great free state of New Hampshire. Welcome back to the Carla Garrick Show. This is episode 37, and I'm so glad you're joining me again. Although, honestly, I'm a little frustrated and a little mad at the world, but, you know, so it goes. And uh, the reasons are because the elites, the people who think they can run and rule your lives, are screwing up big time again. So here we are. Uh, this week, I will be talking about three issues. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about it's the economy, stupid. Um, I like to call that the three E's. So the economy, education, and energy costs, that's pretty much the three E's of why you should vote for me come November. Um, I'm also going to talk a little bit about this massive fight I got into with Scott Adams of Dilbert fame, uh, who I will now fondly refer to as Clot. Adams. Anyway, he uh, blocked me, so we'll see what that drama was about, which leads us into my real topic for the day, which is Nuremberg II and why anyone who has any, any form of ethics should start to support a call for a Nuremberg II trial. All right, so the economy. Let's do this quickly. Inf uh, inflation numbers came in, and if I could find my piece of paper, which I cannot, I will tell you it does not look good. In fact, it looks horrendous. Uh, airline fares up 42, 43%. Utility gas up 33%. We already know that the uh, energy costs this winter are going to be astronomical. There is only one set of people to blame, and that is the politicians, and especially the ones pushing us towards war in the Ukraine, which we absolutely should fight tooth and nail. Eggs up 30%, gas up 18%. Oh, there's this sweet little lie that I see the Biden administration doing right now, which is like, oh, Kareen, you know, the poor lady who's the press secretary, who's a absolute joke. It's an embarrassment to watch as a woman. I'm just like, oh, please, can we get someone in there who's actually equipped to do the job? Their job is to lie to you in a persuasive way, but she can't even do that. It's embarrassing. So anyway, Kareen likes to say, oh, but look, the gas prices are coming down. And it's true. They have come down. They're still way, way higher than they were under President Trump. But they're only coming down because they're literally using the gas reserves to drive down the price, which means they're using the reserves and when they have to replenish, if and when they need to replenish those reserves, because you know what, cars still run on petrol, then they're gonna have to buy it back at three times the price that they paid for it. So that's gonna be a problem too. Milk's more expensive, bread's more expensive, furniture's more expensive. The one thing that didn't rise as much as everything else to my amusement was men's apparel. So dudes apparently just aren't gonna buy more clothes, which kind of makes sense. That seems like a good place to just cut um, your budget for right now. So that is the economy. But then we have to say that, you know, when the economy starts to go south, all kinds of other problems also come into play, including in our sweet, sweet state of New Hampshire. And that includes homelessness is on the rise. And we do see that everywhere. You know, when I moved to New Hampshire, I there were no panhandlers. That unfortunately is changing. And then crime is skyrocketing and murders are up. And all of that is because of the socioeconomic problems that were caused by the response to COVID. Not COVID, the response to COVID. All right, on education, school choice, school choice, school choice. I saw a tweet this morning from Corey DeAngelis, and I think he made a really important point. And that is we have to persuade teachers that school choice can be good for them too. The only people who should truly and are truly against school choice are the administrators, superintendents, the red tape people, 
and the unions. So if we can bring over the teachers and say to them, hey guys, your life will get better too if you get rid of all this red tape, if we get rid of everything that's broken and wrong, and maybe try smaller, more experimental things. So whenever you are talking about school choice, please actually start to introduce that into the conversation and be like, hey, ki uh, hey teachers, there could be some upside for you too if you come over to the side that actually wants to educate children. If kids can't read and write, we are doomed as a society and I would like us to not be doomed as a society. So, you know, kids reading and writing, number one priority. Energy costs, uh, you know, there are all these false claims. I saw an article in the union leader today where the Democrats were just talking entire nonsense. They're like, oh, energy prices are going up because we didn't pass, we meaning the Republicans, didn't pass renewable uh, bills that were in front of the legislature uh, this past session. That is nonsense. Renewables cannot fix this problem. Renewables cannot power your house and help you drive from point A to B or switch your lights on. So as the joke goes, what did people use before wind power? And, and or, or what did people use before candles? Was electricity because that's where we're heading. So just keep that in mind. Uh, we have to actually be a little more thoughtful, look at the data, and of course, everyone who follows the show knows that I'm super pro-nuclear, and that granite staters, free staters, people who want a better, better, better future, that's where we have to go in the state nuclear power. All right. Now, let me tell you about this big fight I got into with Scott Adams, uh, you know, he has a very active Twitter and one morning he posted something and you can all go follow it. Go to my website, carlagarrick.com. Uh, there's a post up there that has all the screen grabs of the discussion. If you're a big fan, you know, I make these little my life post-its where I do uh, little jokes or just thoughts that occur to me or how life should be. Like, for example, today's was, uh, uh, balancing you leave me alone with me leave you alone. So, you know, those kinds of things. So you can go find it there if you really want to see the actual verbiage of the exchange. But let's just say my little post-it had, I called him a dude and I called him a big bulb. He called me all kinds of words that you should not call a lady. You should not if you believe in chivalry or if you're a, like a decent human and especially if you're a decent man. You know, I was talking to my husband earlier and he was like, I think the most shocking out of all of that was just sort of where he went with the language. Let's say the B word was the nicest of all the things that were thrown my way. There was also a C word. There was a T word. You're going to have to go look that one up because you're like, oh, what's that? It's British. It's also not nice. It's also a part of the female anatomy. Uh, amongst other things, apparently no one would ever want to, let's just say he didn't use the word sleep, but they wouldn't want to sleep with me either. So I don't know what happened in his noggin. Uh, it, was, it was very strange. Basically what I said to him, because he made a post and he said, with regard to COVID, it has now come out that the pharmaceutical companies never tested whether it stops transmission. Let me repeat that. They never tested whether it stops transmission. Yet, every single talking head went out there, including the president, including Fauci, including uh, the CDC lady, including the FDA people. They all told everyone, if you get this clot shot, then you do it to help others. And they all said it would stop transmission. Turns out, one, that's not true, which a lot of us knew from the start. So his post was, hey, no one knew this. And I was like, well, actually, a lot of us did know it. And some of us extrapolated from the lack of data that they were lying. Now, I, my background is a corporate attorney, right? So I have worked in environments where it behooves you 
to frame things in a certain way. So uh, the fact that the company, this is Pfizer specifically right now, who has received the largest criminal fine in the history of the world, that was a fine, I think it was, uh, it was in, in the 2000s, so it was in maybe in the last decade or so, and uh, it was billions of dollars, and it was paid because they lied to their customers. So, you know, they have a track record. So I'm just gonna say when all of this went down, I was definitely coming at it from a skeptical perspective and from a critical thinking perspective. And so, um, you know, I, I said, dude, period. And then I said, hey, a lot of us actually did know that and we could. And then he was like, well, well done for you for, uh, you know, following data that didn't exist. And then I was like, well, a lot of us extrapolated based on the lack of data that you can go, well, they're supposed to tell us this, they're claiming this, but they're not giving us the evidence for these things. Therefore, we should treat that very suspiciously. And then he went off and he went totally, totally, totally bananas. I think he then probably felt bad the next day. And so he blocked me and deleted a few of the sweary tweets, but I had retweeted it. So there is a bit of a record. And then of course, I actually uh, put it up on my website and embedded that so that people can see. So I found it quite amusing, actually. I was uh, being interviewed last night by NBC Boston here in Manchester, and uh, one of the, the reporters follows my Twitter, and he was like, whoa, what was that? That was like kind of super, super shocking. And I was like, yeah, it was super shocking to me. Now take this as you may, we'll say this is more my tinfoil hat side of uh, Carla, but I'm starting to think that this shot, uh, especially if you've had several, uh, is influencing sort of uh, uh, deregulating people's aggression in some ways, because um, I'm seeing a fair amount of that where it's just, uh, just, you know, like kind of nasty, like we can disagree without it getting to this level. So I was actually trying to figure out like, why? Why would you react this way, right? I think we are, we have a massive opportunity, especially uh, for libertarians and for people who, who chose not to uh, go down this path, who maybe have been skeptical for whatever reasons as to, uh, you know, maybe you have a very good knowledge of the bad things government's done over the years. Maybe like me, you had a previous vaccine harm. Maybe there was just a reason, you know, I mean, basically, if you're just skeptical, I think, you know, a lot of us were like, whoa, 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 whoa. Like we are the clinical trials. And that means we're allowed to say no, which brings me to the heart of today's episode, which is we need Nuremberg too. So I'm going to start this part this way. Uh, if you go to my Twitter account, Carla Garrick, you will see that my pin post up there actually is a retweet of a Thomas Massey post where he showed how the CDC is going in and changing what they claimed when they were coercing through fraudulent lies the populace to get this jab amongst other things one of the things we said from the start is you cannot consent you cannot give informed consent which is a requirement for any medical experiment if we don't know what this thing does and they did not have the data to claim it was safe or effective and every single one of you who feels suckered right now my heart bleeds for you. Both my parents had negative effects from the jab. Um, I know of very many people. I mean, unfortunately, Twitter is now full of people who are claiming, who, who claim things like, if I die, then I guess you guys were right. And then they died because they got their fourth booster, right? And so I'm sorry, the data is now out there. We know that the excess mortality is uh, higher in 2021, 22 than it was under the auspices of COVID. That is a tell. Um, several 
uh, medical departments, the, the UK with their national health, those people um, are simply not putting out the data anymore because we're taking the numbers and showing people that this is uh, this is what's happening. So on that tweet where I reshared Thomas Massey, he showed that they went in, the CDC went in and changed the claim that originally said the spike protein doesn't stay in your body, which we knew from the start did not make scientific sense. And they changed that wording, right? So they're real time changing things in an extremely Orwellian way. They changed the definition of vaccine over the past two years on and on. So I reshared that and I reshared it to explain that I had talked, you know, with a legal background, I thought, how can I contribute to this? Because I'm not a scientist. I'm smart enough to read all the source data. And for anything that I formed an opinion on, I actually read the medical source data myself and formed an opinion. I also, you know, just having grown up in, in a time where, I don't know, we actually learn things in school, I had a basic sense of, oh, how do viruses work? What is the biology? What is immune? Uh, what is, uh, you know, natural immunity? How does herd immunity work? All that stuff that they literally, literally, literally just lied, lied, lied to you about, right? So during COVID mania, I said, there is no basis for medical informed consent. And so we need to treat this like we would treat the Nuremberg trial. Now, you know, for, for, for the history junkies out there, I'm not going to get all of this perfectly right. But the Nuremberg trials were part of the trials that they did against the Nazis after World War II. And here are some things you need to know. They hung the culpable scientists and doctors who experimented on humans without their consent because that is an ethical violation that is so profound that you shouldn't be able to get away with it. So when I was making that point over the past two years, people are like, the big tech was literally like, you're not allowed to talk about that. We're going to censor anyone who's talking about the Nuremberg Code. Now, the most important part of the Nuremberg Code that I, you know, and here you can go look it up. There are 10 points to it and everyone should actually go read it. Um, so, you know, it's voluntary consent of human subject is absolutely essential. So the, the, the final ones... The two, so it's 10 points, right, from one to 10. I don't have the time today to read them all to you, but I do want to focus on these last two because I would literally just tweet out first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth of the code, and they would either get warnings on or they'd get shadow banned. Or, I mean, and how do I know? They get zero engagement, zero, zero, zero. But these were the two that I actually think were really uh, important. And I think this is where we're going to have to have the celebrities who have uh, some honesty in their hearts, who are driven by truth and not by, you know, BS and sense and, and, and just nonsense. Uh, Bill Maher is starting to come around. I saw a clip with him. Obviously, Tucker Carlson has been doing some yeoman work on this. Um, but uh, here are the two that are really important. No experiment should be conducted where there is an a priori reason to believe that death or dis disabling injury will occur, except perhaps in those experiments where the experimental physician also serves as the subject. So if you want to experiment on yourself, you can do that, but you're not supposed to just experiment on people willy-nilly. Um, and then finally, the last part of the Nuremberg Code, the original one, is the degree of risk should be taken, the degree of risk to be taken should never exceed that determined by the humanitarian importance of the problem to be solved by the experiment. So the point being, oh, you know what? Actually, I'm in the wrong order there. Here, the, I was like, that doesn't sound right. Those were important too, but here are the super important ones. Okay. 
these were the two that actually got everything flagged. They got all the warnings. They got taken down and all of that. And just in case you don't know this, they have admitted that the government went to the tech companies and told them to censor all of this information. There was collusion through big tech to do the dirty work on behalf of the government. They wouldn't be able to get away with it under the First Amendment of our US Constitution, except that they did this crazy colluding. There is now a class action suit that started on that. So we'll see what comes from there. These are the last two. So this is number nine and number 10 from the Nuremberg Court. During the course of the experiment, the human subject should, at be, should be at liberty to bring the experiment to an end if he has reached his physical or mental state where the continuation of the experiment seems to him to be impossible. So that puts the onus on each one of us to decide when we're done with their crap. Number 10, during the course of the experiment, the scientist in charge must be prepared to terminate the experiment at any stage if he has probable cause to believe in the exercise of good faith, superior skill and careful judgment required by him that a continuation of the experiment is likely to result in injury, disability, or death of the experimental subject. Now, I wanna tell you something that will raise the hair on your head. If you don't know this, you're, gonna get mad, or at least I hope you get as mad as I am. There is currently, until tomorrow, Thursday, uh, the CDC is now moving to put the COVID jab on the immunization schedule for children. Why? Now, let me explain this to you. When they came out with the COVID vaccines, they were like, ah, we haven't actually tested this on anyone. We haven't done the clinical trials. We don't know what the hell we're doing, but we're going to, you know, force this on everyone. And so we don't want to be held liable in case something goes wrong. So we're only going to apply for emergency authorization. So you've heard that term a lot. You've seen it around. The reason is if something is approved by the CDC um, under emergency authorization, the companies and their products are exempt from legal liability. So if you have an emergency declaration, emergency or, uh, authorization, you cannot sue the company for harm, disability, or death. Okay, and the government becomes the insurer of last resort, so the government's like, okay, we, we might do it. The percentage of claims that they have actually paid out for vaccine harm over the years is less than 1% of claims filed. So that gives you an idea where you're going to be. That would be up the creek. All right. So that's emergency authorization. It's been two years, so they can no longer justify saying it's an emergency. So now they got to come up with something clever. So it turns out if you put a vaccine on the childhood schedule, i.e. this is required for a kid to go to school those vaccines are also all exempt from liability. So tomorrow they are doing the hearing to put it on the childhood schedule. So please remember, children have a statistical zero percent chance of dying from COVID. We now know that these jabs will give people myocarditis. The death rate amongst men uh, 30 through 50 has skyrocketed. People are seeing a lot of harm. There's brain damage. There's heart damage. There's all kinds of gnarly things going on. The studies are out. Go follow my feeds if you don't believe me. The data is all there. And so they are putting it they're putting this jab on the childhood schedule to make sure Pfizer and Moderna are not held liable for the harm that they have caused by experimenting on humans for no other reason than profit. So it's disgusting if uh, I'm going to post this today on Wednesday. So if you see this before tomorrow, please go to the CDC site, leave a comment, let them know. And then also we all have to get behind this idea 
of Nuremberg II. Someone has to be held to account because part of the social malaise and part of the problem we are seeing in the world is people do crappy things and they get away with it. And we have to say this time, this COVID mania, this level of evil and malfeasance that has been done across the global population of this great planet will not stand. So I'm going to expend a fair amount of energy promoting Nuremberg too. So, all right, I think that if there's true repentance, if there's true quest for forgiveness, we should make room for that in, 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 in this quest for vengeance. Like that's not even actually how I feel. I think that, you know, if someone generally asks for forgiveness, we can do it. And then we, the approach may become something like the truth and reconciliation tribunals that they had in South Africa under apartheid. The, the requirements there were as you actually had to uh, sort of confess and be truthful and, and ask for forgiveness. Maybe that's an option, but I think a couple of heads need to metaphorically or not role. So um, things you should know, the elections obviously are coming up. So if you are in the great, beautiful state of New Hampshire, please be sure to come out and vote November 8th. If you're in Ward 11 of Manchester, be sure to come vote for me, Carla Garrick. Why? Because I know what's up and I have the drive and the ambition and the brains to actually fix some of these insurmountable problems that they have done. Everyone else screwed up the world and now I'm here to go fix it. So that's why you should vote for me. You should also follow all of my channels and all the stuff I'm doing. If you're not following me on Twitter, go do it, Carla Garrick. If my Facebook, I post a lot there. Obviously my website, carlagarrick.com. That is where you can find more about the art of independence. And if you're wondering why, here is a little review. Someone left me on Odyssey because I'm insane. I was like, oh, is this a real review or is this just like a Odyssey little thing they send to everyone? I'm kind of hoping it's not. I think it's not, but you know, I'll let you into my little madness. So this was a review left on my Odyssey channel for my shows, The Carla Garrick Show, episode 37 this week. It says, you are an effing badass. You have rock star charisma, rocket science intellect, jazz musician cool, with a little George Carlin wit and humor. Keep up the incredible work. I can only keep it up if you guys keep watching. Drop me a comment, like, share, subscribe. Let someone know. Put the word out. Thank you for your support. And I will see you guys again next week. Until then, have a great, great, great rest of your week. And remember, together we can live free and thrive.